Hello everybody, Kaboostat.exe here, and today I'm just going to do the patch notes from the December 4th update for Fallout 76. I wanted to wait a little bit just to see if there's going to be any kind of like hot fixes or whatever. If it sounds like I'm really excited, well that's because I am. I have drank two cans of Red Bull for this, I'm ready to go! But before we get started on the actual patch notes, I'm going to tell you, you can now actually go get that canvas bag you want for your collector's edition. The first thing in the description below is a link to the helpline where you can actually get it. Just click on Fallout 76, then click on purchases and codes and whatnot. Then select the last thing that's about the Power Armor Edition and then fill out the form you're gonna need a proof of purchase though so you might need that receipt hopefully you still have it you know or maybe you can go online i haven't filled that out myself you have until january 31st to do this by the way but sooner rather than later is always better i actually also have a theory as to what kind of happened with fallout 76 and i plan to get that video out next week i'm hoping to get maybe monday or tuesday i mean smash ultimate comes out here so you know it's gonna be a little tricky to kind of put that down to make another video I apologize for this week-long delay I've had. A lot has happened this last week. I shouldn't really go into it because that's not what this video is about. But I want to say I apologize. We got more stuff coming up, including the official release of Killing Floor 2's Twisted Christmas with Gary Busey. So I'll have some stuff of that. So stay tuned for that. Also, keep in mind, we're going to have another update for Fallout 76 next week on December 11th. And I can really feel that Red Bull coming through me. So I apologize if I sound really weird or super excited. First thing to note is that for consoles, the update's going to be about 3 gigabytes, and for PC, it's going to be about 36 megabytes. Some general things that have changed. We have a thing for PC where the frame rates are once again uncapped. However, reaching very high frame rates will no longer cause movement speed to increase. This was actually fixed back in the November 19th patch. Also, the game client as well as the service have received additional stability improvements. This is so they can then implement this next part here, which is that increase in stash box that we all wanted. Granted, it's only a 50% increase to 600 from the previous 400, but Bethesda has stated they're planning on increasing it more. This is mainly just to make sure it doesn't completely break the game. If you want to know what it could potentially do, just use the infinite carrying weight glitch by constantly dequipping and requipping armor that's pocketed. It has the pocketed mod so you can carry more. Constantly dequip and requip that. Once the carrying weight hits negative, you then have a super high number for the, your carrying weight. You can basically carry almost everything. Once you do that, though, you can really feel the stress on the game, though. So hopefully as more stability increases come out, we're going to be starting to see that stash box, like, carrying weight increase. But I still have that video coming out. I promise that will be out before Smash Ultimate. Then we have two things for the workshops. Higher level resource collectors now generate ore instead of scrap, which sucks because now you have to take that ore and then go smelt it at the chemical station, which will require you to have acid now. So that's kind of just another resource that you're going to have to keep a lot of. But it's not hard to find. The other thing for workshops is the resource collector or kill rates, or basically how fast it produces things, and its carrying capacities have been reduced for each resource, including ammo and fusion collectors. I mean, I don't really know why. I mean, ammo is kind of like a thing where I'm like, please, can you guys just come take it? Look, if you want ammo, just ask me. If you want 308s or 45s, I got you covered. Next up, we have some balances. The XP rewards for killing high-level creatures has been reduced. When it comes to bosses, the amount of boss loot dropped by the creature has been fixed. It is now 2 to 4, depending on the creature's difficulty and level and automatic weapons have their damage increased by 20 percent across the board i'm really excited for this because now maybe i'll be more inclined to use automatic weapons i mean when you use 150 caliber rounds to kill an angler you kind of get discouraged from using that i mean it i mean i get it has a lot of damage resistance but like seriously it's just it's 50 cal rounds come on then we have the fix for weapon effects when getting hit by the cry later from another player we now have the chilled frosted and frozen statuses this is because apparently there was an issue where the cryolator can actually freeze another player for two hours. So, thank God for that one. Now let's move on to the bug fixes. First up for stability and performance, we have things for consoles. For both consoles, there was an issue fix that could cause the player to encounter an infinite loading screen when signing out of their console while playing Fallout 76. And then specifically for Xbox, an issue was addressed for involving a crash that would occur when sending multiple team invites immediately after exiting Vault 76 to another player who is not a friend. And then some general bug fixes we have the first one is the power armor where you can't exit your power armor. An old glitch from Fallout 4 which is now once again patched. Then we have a fix for the nuclear silos where the flipboard inside the nuke silo will no longer display portions of the launch codes too soon after codes were reset for the week. By the way, I'm thinking about doing a thing where I kind of go and find the codes and upload them as soon as I find them for that week. I was thinking about that actually when they were first announced, but let me know if you want me to do that. And then for traps, players can no longer continuously disarm the same grenade trap. 
Moving on to camp workshops and crafting. First up, we have a fix for the camp where the locations now will correctly save the standalone items built by the player and put it in the stored items tab. It wasn't doing that consistently, I've noticed. Then specifically for PS4, we have a fix to the workshops where the wires will no longer appear to float in midair when attempting to connect two or more objects. Lastly, for this section, turrets will no longer become invisible if the player is not present at their camp when the turrets are destroyed. Then for perk cards, we have it where ranking up a perk card will no longer cause a duplicate card to appear. For social, we have two for teams. First, they fix an issue that could prevent a team from being correctly formed in a game world after creating a team in the main menu when both players are using new characters. And then also display duration for social notifications that have been reduced when many notifications are pending. Then for survival, the electrically charged and unstable isotope mutations no longer provide the player with bonus health. And then finally, the user interface section. First off, they implemented a disconnecting players after 10 minutes of inactivity. You will receive a notification when you have one minute left. Then for the atomic shop on PC, your clicks will no longer be disjointed from your cursor when you're on this 16 by 10 resolution. With enemies, red crosshairs and enemy health bars will no longer persist on screen when the enemy is no longer in view. There's been some fixes to localization. The Pip-Boy had fixed an issue that could cause duplicates to appear on the Pip-Boy stat and effect interfaces. However, it still doesn't tell me if I'm addicted to alcohol. Is that what it looks like? That would be very useful to know if I'm still addicted to something. I swear it's not what it looks like. Then there's a fix for dying while severely over in cover will no longer remove all map markers when attempting to respawn. Instead, now you can respawn to the nearest map marker as you're supposed to be able to. And finally, the quest tracker. Quest objective notifications will no longer appear for inactive quests immediately upon connecting to a world. Whew, that was a lot. Okay, well, next week we're gonna have some more. I've been putting out a lot of Fallout 76 content recently. That's mainly because it was just a, you know, big release. And I'm gonna be putting out some more, you know, Killing Floor 2 stuff. And I have something for Overkill's The Walking Dead. I mean, that's something I think I need to talk about since I'm a big Payday fan. So stay tuned for that. If you like this video, give me a like. Let me know what I should do differently. I'm still kind of developing. And if you have any ideas for a 1,000 subscriber video, let me know. I just reached 1,000 subs. I celebrated by getting drunk. I got some funny moments coming up, by the way. But until all those videos are out, hope you folks have a good one, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.